during the weekend that Don went missing in Tiger King 1, they talked about Carol going on that late night milk run. At 11 o'clock, she goes to Albertsons to pick up cat milk, which they didn't sell at Albertsons, by the way. Right. And her car <laughs> breaks down. I love that. When you watch, you know, Carol has these diaries that she puts out on her YouTube channel. But in one of her diaries, she said that Albertsons was closed. It's so easy to go back and look things up nowadays. But we found newspaper articles for that Albertsons. It had actually opened in the spring of 1997. And it was a 24-hour Albertsons. So... I don't think she ever went to Albertson's for one. I think she was busy doing something else that night. But the Albertson's was a 24-hour Albertson's. And what we have learned is Carol ended up with Don Lewis's cell phone. Right. All the witnesses that I talked to said that Don Lewis and his cell phone were like one. There was never a time they did not see that man with his cell phone. But we did find out that Carol ended up with the man's cell phone on the the day that he was supposedly supposed to be going to Costa Rica. He would take that phone to Costa Rica with him because there were people that were over there that I've talked to that said, yeah, he had his cell phone in Costa Rica and he would call people in the States from Costa Rica. So, you know, one of the big things that come out of this is. Carol claims that she was out doing this late night milk run to an Albertsons, which was, she says, closed, but it was open, which makes me think she never went there. And then she comes home the next day. She tells her housekeeper, who was also the notary on the will and the power of attorney, that Don Lewis is missing. There's a lot of things that just don't add So why up. do you think she went for this? quote unquote milk run at 3 a.m. where and they describe it in the in the series where it took her two or three hours. She said her car broke down, all these other things. What do you think was really going on when she went to find this cat milk at Albertson's? It was four hours is how long it took this milk run. Supposedly Gosh. she left at eleven PM and got back home at three AM or around three AM. But what we've uncovered is that night her brother who was a deputy with Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department. Isn't that convenient? Yeah, very. He was out working. I have the call sheets on this from the public records, but I think it was at 3.02 a.m. He gets a call from dispatch about a burglary call. Right. In the report, he gets that call, but he has to be free. That says free. I, I think his badge number, is ID number is like 3892, but he gets the call for it. And it says freed. So I called one of my sources at the sheriff's department. I said, hey, can you go over this with me? And he says, yeah, what that means is Chuck got a call and he was busy doing something else. So he could not take the call and he had to be freed from it. And then on the next line, you see someone else that dispatch called to take the call. And the person that took the call was covering another area. These people have areas that they're assigned to. Right. So Chuck gets a call at like 302. He's doing something. We don't know what he's doing, but he can't take this burglary call. So this other guy covers him. And then 15 minutes later, Chuck calls dispatch and says, okay, I'm finished doing whatever it was I'm doing. I'm going to go over and provide backup for the guy covering me. Right. And then he goes over, I think, at 317 to this call. So we looked up those records and the call was like two blocks from Big Cat Rescue. So it's real close to Carol. But what Carol says happened, she was walking back from the Albertsons around 3 a.m. And she hears her brother's voice because he's on a call somewhere. And she claims that this guy, we, we looked up the address where the call was. And then we looked up the route from Albertson's to her house. And we're like, okay, if you're walking on main street, you go this way. If you're taking the shortest route, you're going on these little back roads. But the closest she ever would have been to that call was two blocks away. And she wants people to believe that she's just out there walking and she hears her brother at this burglary call talking to someone outside. That's how her and her brother met up that 
Sunday morning, early morning. But I think they were already together doing something. And he got the call, whatever they were doing, they had to finish up. And then he had to go cover his call because there's, I mean, there's records of it. So if you're out doing something you should be doing and and you're working, you get a call from dispatch, you only have a limited amount of time to really get your butt back on, on the job. But something happened that night and there's not any reports that I've seen. I've heard from some of my sources about a report from another cop that was out that night working that call. And supposedly, like I said, I have not seen the report. So I'm, this is coming from one of my sources. But in the report, there's an officer that did see Carol with her brother. And he described Carol as frantic. And in Tiger King 2, Jerry Mitchell is kind of narrating the story about that Sunday night. And he brings it up. He says, 